So before we jump into today's video, I did want to get on here at the front because this is super scattered. Um, I run into multiple issues while working on the aircraft, uh, and it was a variety of things. Um, I still have some issues that I've got to get resolved, but uh, initially I got the wrong part number of engine, um, the rubber bushings for the engine mount. Um, I was trying to do a couple STC modifications that um, as I got to researching them, I realized I was not going to be able to do because it just was not compatible with the aircraft. Um, and so there's a lot of kind of frustrating um, things that you're going to see in this video. And I thought about just editing it all out and just cutting straight to basically the part where we do get to run the aircraft today. I think it's a great illustration of what real aircraft ownership is like. And so I know the video is longer, but hopefully you guys get to see either what it's like or if nothing else, realize there's somebody else out there who has the same struggles that everyone else does when it comes to owning old aircraft. So let's jump right into it. Uh, we're going to pick it up where we left off last time uh, after rolling it back in and realizing we need to change the carb out and uh, we'll go from there. Alright, so I got some good news and I got some bad news. So this is the Casper Labs oil filter adapter and that's what I was hoping to be able to install on the aircraft. Um, it would be really, really simple. It'd be a whole lot better for the engine uh, to filter at the level of one of these filters um, rather than at a screen level like is currently on the aircraft. But the problem is, is when I go to install this, there's several things that are going to be in the way. The filter, you can see the screen right here at the end of my finger. Um, and the filter is going to be coming up just underneath this bar, even if it, if it even will come up underneath that bar. Um, I've reached out to a guy at Casper Labs. And uh, we may not be doing this installation after all. I do need to go ahead and pull the engine um, to inspect a couple things. As far as the accessory case is concerned, as well as... Um, I would really like to get the engine pulled just to see how the mount looks. There's some spots I cannot inspect during the annual for this engine mount. And so we're going to take a look at all that. And uh, so that's probably what the rest of the day is going to be, is pulling the engine. So um, I'm about to go get my very uh, technical engine hoist. Finally got this thing hooked up. We have the engine supported with the weight of the entire tractor that we use on the farm here. So uh, I feel like it's gonna hold it. Uh, I did lock the hydraulics down so that way they can't move and this thing should not drop at all. I'm just gonna unhook everything, slide it forwards, inspect this oil screen, reinstall it. Uh, I've got new hardware um, and new pucks here, uh, shock absorbers to use. But let's go ahead and release these bolts.
All right, so I've got the top ones loosened. Now I just need to undo these guys right here. And this is, uh, you can see that these shock mounts on these are a little bit corroded. Um, like this guy right here is breaking apart pretty bad. So I've got new shock mounts, uh, the pucks that go inside of here, and we're gonna be replacing those uh, hopefully today um, while we're doing all of this. All right, so it's been one more frustrating day. Um, I guess let's start off with the STC. I'm not going to be able to install the oil filter adapter because of this fifth mounting point right here. I was afraid it was going to uh, be too crowded with everything in there and so I just got confirmation of that from the STC owner that uh, I cannot legally install uh, this filter adapter and even if I could I don't know that I could get the filter on and off so. Well, and then on top of that I went to take the uh, engine off and the shock mounts, the rubber pieces right in here that I ordered. Um, they're the wrong size, so the part number was wrong. And then I got into looking at my mags again and realized that the right mag is not timed correctly. So I'm taking that apart and I'm gonna reinstall the mag. It's just been one more frustrating day of aircraft maintenance, so. Thought I was gonna be able to maybe get this thing done before I start back at school here in a few days, but it's not gonna happen. Okay, so you can see now that I've cleaned out the screen and it is looking a ton better. You might be able to see. Dang, this light's bright. So this guy's looking a lot better. The screen is um, basically completely cleaned out now and we should be good to go ahead and reinstall this. I think what my plan's gonna be is to um, reinstall the screen, make sure everything's working correctly, and then after I ground run it for a little bit, um, once I get the carb installed, Hopefully we can pull the screen again, see how many particulates there are in there. Got to go back and look through the log books and make sure this guy uh, that owned it prior to me has been pulling the screen. I feel like that would have been something I would have noticed, but now that I've seen how difficult it is, um, I just want to verify that he has been doing it. I've got all of the um, mags reinstalled. My leads all appear to be hooked up correctly. Um, I've got the oil screen removed. We cleaned it. Uh, I'm getting ready to reinstall it. Um, I had to remove the tack line to do that. Um, but other than that, uh, I'm gonna reinstall the screen and Get ready to put the carb on. That's about all I've got left. It's finally stopped raining or getting ready to stop, I would think. You guys might have noticed that I've been using a new set of Milwaukee tools. And a big shout out to Aircraft Spruce who's added these tools to their lineup. Milwaukee is incredibly dependable and is becoming a leading industry standard in both the construction as well as aviation maintenance environment. Now, I've used a lot of different power tools that are a lot of different colors in the past. But this set of Milwaukee tools is turning out perfect for what I'm doing on this 140. Between their M18 line and their M12 line, especially with the ratcheting wrench in the M12 line, there are a ton of useful tools that you can find in the Milwaukee lineup. So thank you to Aircraft Spruce, and if you guys want to support them, head on over there and take a look at what they've got up for sale. Alright, so we got our new hem styled fastener here. 
So what we're going to do is attach, remove this old one, uh, the clip and ball style off, um, and then we will attach it to the throttle uh, lever here on the carb. All right, we got that on. We got this new guy installed right here. We're good to go there. And make sure that it's clear all the way up and around on the back side of the engine. Now it's time to get the mixture installed. All right, so we got the mixture cable hooked up. Now it's on to putting the air box back. Let's get the new gasket for it and get this thing reinstalled. All right, so I've got everything hooked up on the carb. Um, I got the air box back in, and now it's just a matter of really looking over the engine and making sure that um, everything's hooked up correctly, that I don't have anything that I've accidentally left undone during this entire time. Uh, and then I'm gonna try to transition into dealing with these engine mounts and see if we can't get that done before we roll it out and run it today. All right, so I got the tractor in here now, and we're gonna get these engine mounts removed and replaced. Um, the main reason is some of these look horrible. Um, so I'll show you guys what they end up looking like afterwards, but I've got the hardware now hooked up, and uh, we're gonna get in here and get started. So I actually had to get my dad's help on this because it turns out that I could not, um, even with the tail jacked up on a chair and uh, with everything else that I have with the tractor and everything, we could not get these pucks out without um, two of us working on it together, uh, which is nice, it gave me some time to work with him. But I wanna show you guys what some of these bushings look like uh, coming out of the aircraft. I don't actually think I took a photo or a picture of what they look like new, but it wasn't like this. So these are very much, um, let me get where some good light will be on them here. Like some of these guys are just cracked all to pieces. Like this one here was the one that came off the uh, bottom, that back side that I had a photo of. That's what that one was. And all of them are just like deformed and messed up. They're, they weren't even centered correctly. So I am really pleased with how it's turned out as far as me um, figuring out that that needed to be done and now having it done so hopefully uh, that's actually the last thing. So um, let's get ready to roll this thing out and uh, we're gonna go ahead and run it. Got to be kidding me. Apparently my starter shot. I literally am ready to run it right now in my starter shot. So it turns out that actually instead of the starter being the problem, the battery was just low. So I've got it on charge here and hopefully that is going to fix it. Uh, I'm gonna leave it overnight and we'll see what happens. All right, guys, we're back out here this morning. Um, it's been a few weeks yet again. And uh, the reason this has taken longer than it was is I recently changed jobs from a aircraft mechanic at um, Middle Tennessee State University, where a lot of the videos that you've seen on my channel probably have been shot. Um, a lot of the stuff that I've done, I got to do while I was there as a mechanic. And recently they've uh, brought me on as a faculty member teaching the uh, introductory classes and the pro-pilot side of their curricula. So I really haven't had a ton of time to where I could just work on a uh, little blue back here and uh, get it up and running. But what I've decided to do is uh, go with um, as often as I can on the weekends and still divvying up some time with family and stuff just to 
piddle around with this and try to get it running and hopefully today um, we can finally get this thing running um, and I'm happy with everything the way it's gone so far and I know in this video there was a lot of frustrations a lot of like uh, things that are typical when you're owning an aircraft um, I've always heard it said that the cheapest part of owning a plane is buying it uh, after that's when you really start paying for stuff and there's a lot of truth in that so um, yet again it is raining so uh, what we're gonna do is I'm going to finish wrapping up everything in here make sure it looks good and uh, ready to go roll it out and try to run it so we've done a ton of work um, over the last three weeks really um, putting new um, engine mount bushings on, putting new uh, carb, airbox. Um, we've done a ton of uh, just work and occasionally I'll have to unhook a line or something and make sure that uh, I hook it back up. So before, I'm still kind of waiting on a little bit of rain to stop drizzling outside. So while I'm waiting on that, I am planning on just really going over the engine and looking at everything, putting a wrench on a lot of the um, nuts on each bolt to make sure that it was tightened correctly. Uh, I've laid out all of my technical data um, and got copies of that. So I am using that. You guys probably don't see it on camera ever because it's kind of the boring part of aircraft maintenance. But uh, we're doing everything following the FAA regulations for it as well as uh, I just want to do one more last, not pre-flight inspection. Obviously we're not flying it, but before I go to run this thing and do something stupid um, because we have worked on it, walked away from it, worked on it, walked away from it. Today I've got the time, so I might as well just really thoroughly look over the engine before we take it outside and give it a shot. So I got it right here and uh, it started raining again so I'm just gonna wait I thought we had a little bit more time than that but it took about an hour to get everything tightened back down set up on the engine or not tightened down just making sure it was tightened down so so I'm just gonna sit here and wait until the rain breaks off again and uh, then we will get it out and get it going I'm gonna check and make sure it's got fuel in it um, check oil stuff like that just piddle around basically until Rain stops.
All right, it's finally stopped. I've already got the plane rolled out. Uh, as soon as the rain started breaking up, I just rolled it out, so I forgot to set you guys up to see it. But we're gonna go ahead and try to get it going, and uh, hopefully we get it fired up and finally get to run this thing. I got it to run, but something's wrong with the left mag. So when I turn it to right, and both, it's running, but when I turn it to just that left mag, I ground this right mag out, it uh, completely dies. And it's not even like it chokes out, it just, it completely dies. So um, I didn't want to run it too long because of that. Um, you know, obviously I don't have a mag working. I have looked at everything. I'm going to roll it back inside and double check the timing, um, but I checked that before. Uh, I haven't done anything since I checked it last, and it was perfect. So more than likely, I'll have to pull that left mag off, and uh, I may just take it down to school and go to the maintenance shop down there and see if I can test it on a mag tester um, to make sure it's working. If it's not, I'm kind of torn uh, between sending it back and just going ahead and popping the case off of it and seeing if it is uh, maybe something simple that I could fix and then just sign off. Um, but if, it is, if it's not something simple, then I'm definitely going to send it back, which is unfortunate because that means at least another month or so before this thing's like legitimately running. I mean, it ran today, but half an airplane ran on one magneto. The other thing that I'm a little bit worried about, actually there it is, it was running really rough, and this cylinder is noticeably cooler. Actually, that one's like burning me a little bit where I can just keep my hand on this one. So I'm hoping that might just be the only... Yeah, that's hot. Yes, okay, so cylinder one is not hot, uh, not very hot. And 
Um, I mean, it's warm, but that could just be a plug. Um, I could try swapping the plugs out, but since I already know my mag's bad, uh, I let it run enough to warm up. It looks like all my temp and pressure gauges look good. It looks like my uh, alternator is charging. Um, it looks like the uh, ammeter's working. Basically everything else, um, with the exception I tried testing radios, and I couldn't really uh, get those to work, but I mean, it's not really anybody out flying right now because of the weather moving through so um, I'll worry about that later uh, when I get into the actual annual but other than that it looks like this thing's uh, good to roll back in and uh, we will not bring it back out until um, I go to do compressions and I want to run it up for that um, but like I said I'll have to send off or fix this mag before we can finish that so Appreciate you guys watching. Uh, it's like I kind of hate to put this up because, yeah, it ran, but there's more work to do. So hopefully, uh, you guys find this interesting, enjoyable, and uh, if nothing else, informational about what it's like to actually own uh, aircraft and specifically extremely old aircraft. So we'll see you guys next time. So I did want to kind of jump on and explain, because it's just me setting up cameras and stuff, I didn't have great shots of the engine running and I obviously just had the one because I wasn't going to get out and try to move the camera around and I don't have multiple cameras. So I got it fired up. It did run well on one mag, a little bit rougher than I was hoping for. And so when I started checking it, I realized that my number one cylinder was uh, cooler than the rest of them. But I was able to take it through a range of RPM settings, and I'm really happy with how things have gone so far. So um, you might think I was frustrated or, or disappointed in the video, so I wanted to just close out with uh, I am extremely excited about where I am currently in this project. The aircraft is running, and it hasn't for six, seven years now. Uh, I've obviously got stuff i got to do. I've got to get this mag problem sorted out, whether it's sending it back, to the uh, 145 station that did it and getting them to repair it correctly this time or testing it because I double and triple checked I'm timed up correctly um, so something is not working between the mounting point on the engine and the spark plug so I've even considered looking at the distributor cap and saying if it needs to be replaced um, but air, it would be a very unique situation for uh, and everyone has said that it doesn't seem likely that a distributor cap fails all four leads at the same time. So um, I'm going to get that off this weekend, take it back down on Monday or Tuesday and test it, and hopefully we will have a, a lot of progress between now and the next video. I do want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, I love doing these videos. I love uh, taking the time to do it. So hope you guys at least find it informational and enjoyable. We'll, we'll see you next time.